React 19 is now in RC stage, which means it's ready for library authors, but not yet ready for app developers yet. 19 is stable already? <laughs> so if you're an app developer and you're excited to see what's coming up in React 19, this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to talk about everything that's coming to React 19. If you're somebody like me who's excited to see the next shiny feature of React and see what's coming up, and you're kind of unsure of whether or not React 19 is the version you should jump to, this video is going to be for you. In this video, I'm going to share the new features of React, React Actions, and Compiler. I'll talk about the new hooks that have been introduced, use action state, use optimistic, and use farm status. And we'll take a look at what's changing with React 19 and the difference between creating a form with React 18 and React 19. So if you want to learn React 19, let's get started. Hi, my name is Shruti Kapoor. Through this video, I want to simplify the web for you and help you become the best version of the developer that you're always meant to be. Let's get started. First, let's talk about the new features of React 19. The main feature that's been announced in React 19 RC is React Actions. Let's talk about what React Actions are by taking a look at this example. This is how we add input fields right now. We have an input field and we attach an on change handler. We'll typically have like a set state with the here. Um, we are adding set name here. We also have a button usually by which we submit a form or an input field. This is currently a div, but you can imagine that this is the same for a form as well. Before actions, if you wanted to show a loading state, what we would have to do is manually set a flag call is pending and set the set and set the flag to be true before we call an API and then set the flag to false once we've done calling an API. This is how we do it right now in React 18. Start transition hooks can accept an async functions as well. Start transition hook is a hook that was introduced in React 18, but with React 19, we can now add an async function within a start transition hook. This async function is actually an action. So simply functions that use async transitions are called actions. They're also supported on the server. So if you write an action on the client side, you can use it on the server side by adding use server to the action itself. In order to make it easier to handle forms, React DOM now has action attribute added to the form itself. So now you can pass an action to the form itself using the action attribute, which may look similar to PHP if you're familiar with PHP. There's another hook that's added, uh, which is use form status. We're gonna take a look at this in detail. But the main, the main thing to remember here is that use form status comes with a pending and a data attribute. And the pending flag is the one that we can use to actually now show loader states. So we no longer have to manually track loader states anymore with the help of set states. So that's React Actions. React Actions now simplify the way we use form. We no longer have to manually track pending states. We also don't have to manually capture data through the set state attributes. Data now comes back as part of use form status. There's no new hooks, use form status and use action states would help in um, form submissions. We're gonna take a look at them in a detail, but for now let's talk about another exciting feature, which is React Compiler. One caveat though is that React Compiler is actually not shipped as part of the React 19 package. It comes as an ESLint plugin. So with the help of React Compiler, we no longer have to use, use memo or use callback anymore. We can just use React Compiler because with the help of React Compiler, we get auto memoization out of the box. React memo and React callback actually memoize the code which means that when we add React memo or React callback or use callback to a function or a value, React knows to check the memoized value or the cached value before it recalculates that value. What memoization means is that when React encounters a use memo or use callback, it knows that if no parameters have changed or if nothing about the function or the value has changed, then React can reuse the value that it had previously stored thereby preventing re-rendering of the component. That's memoization. With React Compiler, we get that for free out of the box. So we no longer have to add use memo or use callback hooks anymore. We no longer have to manually memoize our code anymore, which is so amazing because the number of times that we've forgotten to add these callback hooks and add memoization to our code has led to so many performance issues. So I'm glad that this comes out of the box. And why this helps us in performance is because with the help of memoization, React Compiler is able to optimize re-renders. 
specifically in two ways. Number one is by skipping re-rendering of children when parent updates or when the props of update, parent updates. And to understand this, we can take a look at this example where friends list is a component that accepts friends, which could be a big object to, uh, to render components like friends list card and message button. Now, previously, what would happen is that if the entire if friends updates, the entire component would update, including message button, which does not depend on friends and also friends list card where some of the friends may be same as previous friends and perhaps there was a new value added. Even though one property may have changed, the entire friends list component re-renders, thereby leading to a lot of wasted re-rendering. But with React Compiler, it has fine-grained reactivity, which means that it understands that if friend ID or friend hasn't changed, the React component doesn't need to re-render, which makes it a lot easier to prevent um, re-rendering of components that do not need to. Another way by which it optimizes um, re-rendering is by skipping expensive calculations. And specifically, it's able to memoize components where, and hooks where an expensive calculation was previously made. This is similar, similar to how we use use memo right now manually. So an example here is, let's say that you have a function, expensive process, if this function lies outside of a component or hook, React Compiler will not be able to optimize this component. React Compiler will not be able to optimize the function itself. However, if the function is now within the React boundary, let's say you've called that function, React knows that that value, which is data here, needs to be memoized. So this way, it's able to automatically memoize or cache the value of the function call. However, if your function itself is outside of the React boundary, React does not have control over it, Therefore, making sure that your function is optimized is also a responsibility that you have to take as a React developer. One thing to remember about React Compiler is that it assumes that the code follows rules of React. And to understand whether or not React Compiler has optimized our code, we can actually paste our code in the React Compiler playground and check on the right side. Here you'll notice that we have a dollar sign equals underscore C. This is how we know that the React Compiler has gone through and optimized the code. So in short, we don't need to use use memo and use callback anymore. But if you love memoizing yourself and you already have code that is memoized, you can leave that code as is. You don't need to remove it yet. Okay, so that was React Compiler. Let's talk about the new hooks that are introduced in React 19. Use form status is a hook that's been introduced in React 19 to help with getting out the information of the last form submission. One caveat though is that use form status can only be used inside of a form's child component. An example is here. Let's say that we have a form and we use use form status within the component itself. This won't work. In order for this to work, you have to create a child component called submit. Let's say submit. You can use use form status within that component. I can imagine that if you have design system components and you're trying to move from React 18 to 19, uh, this could be a place you might have to refactor some code and create child components. So just something to go watch out. So that was use action uh, form status. There's another hook called use action state, which actually gives you back the updated state based on the action that was performed. And specifically the way this works is it accepts a function, which is the um, action function to be called when the form is submitted and an initial state. You can initialize the initial state to be empty or anything else that you want it to be. And it gives you back a state, which is the state that was changed based on the action that was performed and also gives back a form action, which is how you can attach it to the forms DOM element action. Um, so an example is here, you get the form action back from use action state and you can attach the form action to the action itself. There's another hook, which is called use optimistic, which is actually really handy to op optimistically update the UI while the form is being submitted. And the way this works is that it gives you back an optimistic state and an add optimistic function, which is to be called when there is an optimistic update. There is another new API that's been introduced in React 19, which is called use. Um, it sounds like a hook, but it's not a hook. It's actually an API, which can be used to read resources. A really cool example of this is reading like context. You don't need to have context provider anymore or use use context. You can simply call the use API. And why this is helpful is because use context is a hook. So it follows the rules of hooks, which is it cannot be conditionally called. Whereas with API, you can call it anywhere within your code. It doesn't need to be called at the top of your function. So it comes out pretty handy. 
So another thing is because it follows, it is similar to hooks in the sense that it can only be called in vendor. So in short, what's new in React 19 are two features, React Compiler, which comes as a plugin, and React Actions, uh, which help to improve form submission. Hooks use action status and use form status, which gives the information of the form status, uh, form state updated, which gives the information based on the form submission and use optimistic, which can be used to optimistically render the UI and a new API called use. So let's also talk about what's changed with React 19. Ref is now a prop. And this is so helpful because no longer do you have to wrap a ref with forward refs. Oh my God, how many times I've had issues with not wrapping ref with the forward ref and having a bug in my code because ref would be undefined. So you no longer have to do that. Thank God. Uh, you no more have to. You no longer have to use use memo and use callback. Oh, thank God. Um, there are other updates, as in the errors are now better formatted within the console. You can now render context instead of context provider. Um, there's another one that I'm really excited about, which is metadata. So now you can pass metadata within the components itself, like here. So instead of let's say you have um, a blog post and you have a blog post and you have different React components within that blog post, you can now provide metadata to each of those components, each of those blog post components, instead of having to rely on your index HTML for providing metadata for the entire site. This is really helpful for SEO, so I'm really excited about this. Um, another thing is that now style sheets also get a better support, as in you can provide a precedence of default or high. So you no longer have to worry about where in the order it is written. Now you can just give a precedence of high and you can be sure that your styles will be loaded before other styles. So to recap, forms are now getting a better support and the respect that they deserve, they're now finally becoming a first class rather than React. It's now becoming easier to manage pending states within React. You no longer have to track pending states with use states. And uh, you no longer have to use use memo and use callback with React Compiler. Yes. No longer bugs of refs being undefined. Here's a table of all of the updates that are coming with React 19. I did not get to cover React Server components in this video, but React Server components are now becoming stable with React 19. If you want me to cover React Server components, let me know. I'd be happy to do so. Finally, if you're new to React and you're overwhelmed by all of these updates, I want you to know that we've all felt that way. You're not alone. Here's a resource I've created to help you learn React. I've poured my heart into this course to help you understand React in a practical way with examples to help you understand how React works, but also how to use React. If you're interested, link is gonna be in the description. I can't let you go without a dev joke. How does a developer cheer? Happy parade. Thank you so much for joining me.